good evening welcome to my channel i just want to thank god for your life i just want to start off with a quick prayer heavenly father we thank you so much for jesus thank you for the indwelling of your holy spirit thank you lord that you want to take us higher with you in a, a deeper and meaningful relationship and i pray father god that um, your sons and daughters who um, have left your presence will return today as a result of your word going forth Lord, I thank you that it will not return to you void. Someone today will yield to your Lordship. Someone today will lay their life down for you as you laid your life for them. Father, we thank you and give you praise and all the glory and honor belongs to you. In Jesus' mighty name we've prayed. Amen. Now, as I said, my message is taken from the book of Hebrews chapter 5 from verse 7 to 11. Do feel free, as I always say, for your own edification read the whole of chapter five you will be greatly blessed amen somebody okay i'll read it says here who in the days of his flesh when he had offered up prayers and supplication with vehement cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death and was heard because of his godly fear though he was a son yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered and even being perfected, he became the author of eternal salvation to all who obey him, called by God as a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek, of whom we have much to say and hard to explain since you have become dull of hearing. Praise God for his word. Amen, somebody. Now, how many of us can say that we learned obedience from the things we suffered? Obedience from our poverty, that we've learned obedience from hunger or even rejection perhaps, or even persecution. How many of us can confidently say we will learn obedience to these things, through our suffering? Well, I know the Bible is saying here that Jesus, being in his human form, learned obedience in his suffering. Hallelujah. We know that obedience is one of the greatest tests of our faith in God. It is also something that obedience holds us close to God. But we also know in the book of Genesis, from Genesis 3, Adam and Eve disobeyed God. In Genesis 22, we know that Abraham, the relationship between Abraham and God and the blessings that was to come upon Abraham was based on his obedience to God's commands. But yet we know that time and time again, we failed. Time and time again, I fell. Time and time again, perhaps you fell, if we all have to be honest. Now, when we look in the New Testament, Jesus Christ demonstrates to us what obedience really looks like. We know that Jesus was subject to his mother and his earthly father, yet he was without sin. Jesus had to obey all the moral laws. And yet he did not break even one. Jesus was obedient before his death. In his coming, his willingness to come and lay down his life to save humanity from sin. Jesus was one with God. The son of God was obedient to God. Jesus as the son of man in the flesh was so obedient to God. He practically was obedient to God, yet without sin. He obeyed authority, openly and privately. It's not like some of us. Today we are obedient in, in public. When we catch ourselves at home, we are so disobedient. Jesus was obedient in everything that he did. The Bible tells us that Jesus also is the express image of God, but yet he was obedient to God the Father. Jesus' suffering and his obedience meant that there was a possibility of atonement for our sin. It meant that this possibility became a reality. Likewise, we are not saved until we are willing to obey God and receive the free gift of life through Jesus Christ. Jesus lived a life of obedience so much so that through him we can emulate him. Through him, we can look to him as an example of what complete obedience to God looks like. 
despite our trials, despite our temptation, despite our persecution, we can look to Jesus. He learned obedience through his suffering. And he was without sin. Him who knew no sin became sin for me and you. He was obedient, yet he was without sin. To save me and you who have sinned greatly before God. Hallelujah, somebody. Verse 7 says this. That um, he offered up prayers and supplication vehemently with cries. <laughs> he offered up prayers and supplication with intense cries and tears. Jesus was prepared to go low. He humbled himself. Despite the fact that he was a son of God, he was God himself. He was express image of God, yet he went low, humbling himself so that God the Father could lift him up. Jesus lived a life to give glory and honor unto God. He was sorrowful, heavy of heart. The Bible tells us that at one point he, there was drops of blood, what looked like drops of blood, falling from him as he prayed. He roared in prayer. He prayed day and night for us. Now, for someone out there, if you've ever been in doubt about the love of God for you, pick up the Bible and read it. Read it and in it you will come face to face with the love of God for you and the length he would go for you to know him. God could not save his son from death because of you. He could have saved his son from death. But he didn't because if he did, we would have remained in our miserable state, in eternal life of sin. Jesus was obedient unto death. He suffered the pain. He suffered all the trials so that he could bring an end of it through his own death. Jesus, the sinless son, was obedient to the father unto death for our sake. See, the Bible says that he was not afraid to go to the cross. In fact, the Bible says that his eyes were fixed towards Jerusalem. He knew he was about to be hanged, yet he faced, he stared death right in the eyes. Because of you and I. Because of his obedience to the Father. He knew he was about to face death on an old rugged cross. But yet, Jesus did not turn and disobey his Father. Jesus, for a moment on the cross, was separated from God, from the countenance of his Father's face. But yet, he was obedient. In the book of Matthew 27 verse 46 says this, and about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Brothers and sisters, that was the cry of our Lord Jesus Christ, the sinless, perfect Savior, separated for a moment from God, but yet he was obedient. Jesus cried out to God when his face was hidden from him. Jesus cried out to God in that moment of brief separation. Jesus cried out to God because the light of his countenance was removed from him. Darkness engulfed him. The weight of sin, the sin of man was upon him. Yet he was obedient to God. May the Lord carry each and every one of us through suffering and death. May we be delivered from disobedience until the Lord Jesus Christ returns. Hallelujah, somebody. The text says that Jesus was heard because he had godly fear. The father had his son because he had godly fear. Jesus had all the reasons to be arrogant. He had all the reasons to be petulant. Remember, he was the son of God. He was born of the Virgin Mary. 
He knew God. He was the express image of God the Father. And yet the Bible tells us that he had a godly fear of God the Father. How many of us choose to worship idols? How many of us choose to worship money? Yet Jesus Christ was all these things and yet he had a godly fear of God the Father. He was obedient to God the Father. In fact, many a times we wonder why our prayers are not answered or heard. Could it be that there is a lack of godly fear in our making requests known to him? Many of us are so quick to throw in the towel when the prayer takes a little longer to be answered. We turn away from God. We sell our souls to Satan. Brothers and sisters, if only we could wait. If only we could stand firm in obedience, in the godly fear of God, knowing that God has something better for us. The text says here that he had a godly fear. Jesus being God, the son of God, who knew God, had the fear of God. Wow. His answers to prayer were heard because of his godly fear. Now someone here may be saying, well, why was he obedient? He had to be obedient because he was the son of God. He was the express image of God. He knew God. He was from heaven. He was born of the Virgin Mary, full of the Holy Spirit. God was, Jesus was here in the flesh. He lay aside his divinity. He lay aside his nature his heavenly nature, took on upon flesh. Yet he knew his assignment. Do you know your assignment? Have you sought God for you to find out what your assignment is? Jesus knew his assignment. He knew that prophecies had to be fulfilled through him. And he was obedient to God to accomplish this assignment or his assignment. Even when he was staring death face to face, he knew his assignment. He was unwavered. He had a duty. Do we know our duties? Do we know our assignment? He wanted to see his assignment completed and fulfilled. Saving humanity. The old prophecies that I'm referring to, look up uh, at Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14. This was fulfilled in the book of Matthew chapter 1 verse 18 to 25. The old prophecy that I'm talking about, Micah chapter 5 verse 2, fulfilled in Matthew chapter 2 verse 1 to 6. Jesus teaches us to be obedient. In fact, he tells us to deny ourselves and take up our cross daily and follow him. Daily. Not last week, but daily and follow him. We are to obey daily. We are to seek him daily. Hallelujah. Verse 8, it says, Though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. He learned obedience by the things he suffered. He was human. He felt the same pain you and I are feeling. Yet he learned to be obedient in his suffering. He practically learned to suffer rejection so that he can understand your rejection, so that he can have compassion in your rejection. He practically had to suffer poverty so that he could understand your suffering. Jesus went to work. He had a job. He was a carpenter's son. He knew the trials of working with people, but he had to go through it so that you can find ease in him. Jesus practically faced persecution in his flesh by his people that he came to save. 
so that he could have compassion and sympathize with you and I. The book of Philippians chapter 2 verse 5 to 8 says this, Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ, who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a born servant, and coming in a likeness of men, and being found in appearance of a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Hallelujah. He humbled himself to the point of death, even death on the cross. He did not boast. Oh, I know God. I was seated at his right hand yesterday. Oh, I spoke to him this morning. He gave me a word last night. Nah. He was so humbled that he willingly laid his life down for you and for me. He did not boast about any of those things, the heavenly things, the beautiful things in heaven. He laid it aside, made himself of no reputation. Hallelujah. So that when we look to him, we can learn how to be obedient to God's will, to God's command. So that we can look to him as someone who has gone through our suffering. So that we can look to him as our savior. So that we can look to him for our salvation. Hallelujah. Now you're probably wondering, well, how did he um, show demonstrate disobedience? Jesus was totally surrendered to God and God's will. He was totally surrendered to God, to God's desires and to God's will. It was about what the Father wanted him to do. It wasn't about him. How many of us are on this earth saying that we are called by God and yet it's about our will? It's about us. Jesus demonstrated his obedience by his actions. He had a genuine relationship with God the Father. He sought him in every circumstance. He fasted and prayed, drew close to him. The Bible tells us that early in the morning he went to seek God's face. In the evening, we hear the Bible says that he withdrew and he went into prayer. Constantly, he was communing with the Father. Constantly, he wanted to know what the Father's heart was for every situation. We have someone the great high priest to look to, Jesus Christ, the resurrected Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, somebody. In verse 9, it says, And having been perfected, having completed what he came to do, he became the author of eternal salvation to all who obey him, called by God as high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. Having perfected, having completed everything, by his suffering, he finished all that he came to do. He fulfilled all righteousness in his human flesh. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. Jesus, having completed all he came to do, now understands our frailty, now understands our suffering, our need for him. Hallelujah. He sympathizes with us. That's why we call out in the name of Jesus and the demons flee. Hallelujah. Christ in the human form, obeyed God, even through suffering, making him our high priest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, somebody. He did everything that pleases the Father. He did what the Father taught him to do. He did nothing of himself, only what the Father told him to do. You know, the Bible says that we are created in the image of God. And so likewise, we have to look to Jesus, learn to obey God, learn to lean on Jesus, who has completed all sufferings, all righteousness, so that we can obey God in his strength as we await his return. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. Learn to lean on God. As Jesus has completed his task here on earth, we are also supposed to be about doing that which we're called to do. Jesus, through his death and resurrection, has ascended 
into heaven and he's now seated at the right hand of God the Father. He is the author of eternal salvation for those who willingly say yes to him. He's our high priest, as I already mentioned. He's also our mediator. He's our intercessor. He prays for us. He's the sacrifice of our sin. He laid down his life to save us. Through Jesus Christ, we can learn to love one another. We can learn to worship and we can learn to serve God. Believers in Jesus Christ, we have access to God by faith in him. First Peter 2 verse 9 says, But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. <laughs> through Jesus' finished work on the cross, through his suffering, we are called out of darkness into his marvelous light. You don't have to do the bidding of Satan anymore. If only you would obey and receive the gift of life through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. If only you would obey God's command and willingly receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Hallelujah, somebody. Salvation comes only through Jesus Christ. Our obedience is the response that we give as to God as a result of his love for us. We can't earn salvation through obedience. We put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ as our Savior, as our High Priest. Hallelujah. Now, I would like to continue, but I have to stop right there. If you would like to receive Jesus Christ, if you would like to lay down your life, as he, Jesus Christ, willingly laid down his for you, today is that day. Today is that day that you can just say yes to him. Today is that day you can obey the word of God and say yes to the King of Kings. And put your hope and trust in him, your high priest, your intercessor, your mediator, your sacrifice for all your sins. You can put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. If you'd like to do that, then please do join me in saying this simple prayer. Amen. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner. Forgive me of all my sins. Wash me. Change me, set me free, let me never be the same again. I believe you died for me. Thank you that you rose from the dead. I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart. I want to trust you and follow you as my Lord and Savior all the days of my life. In Jesus' mighty name, I've prayed. Amen. Now, if you pray this prayer, please do find a Bible-believing church. If not, if you don't have one, I would advise you to seek God's face. He will lead you into an environment where you'll be nurtured where you can learn to lead, hallelujah, where you can learn to sow, learn to give. I'd also like to highlight that I've written a book on rejection. If anyone out there is suffering or struggling with the subject of rejection, it's a book that was written by the Holy Spirit. I was only an instrument. Um, it's a book that's very powerful. And I believe that if you can get hold of it, it will definitely change your life. It answers a lot of questions around rejection and how my struggle became a tool that God is using to heal other people. So do pick it up. It's on Amazon. Um, it will greatly bless you. Thank you so much for watching. Um, do feel free to share our videos. I know the Lord will greatly reward you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much. Bye now.